Why we say that we are in the winning team is because there is a command of the Lord. The last command is our first concern. And this we use in the Haggai Institute. But this is appropriate for every church. For every church. Next slide, please. And uh, can I have the next slide? Yeah, okay. So he says, Go therefore, this last command. He said, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So all of us know that this is known as the great what? Commission. Means that it is not just a suggestion. It is a commission. Means that every disciple of Christ, you have a responsibility. But some of us, we struggle with this. We say, I can't even manage my own life. How can I affect the life of others? And today you shall learn that because you have the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's have the next slide, please. And teaching them, thank you, to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I'm with you always to the end of the age. The instruction is for us to teach them to remember and to obey everything that Jesus has taught. And therefore, in this church, we expect you to move in miracles. We expect you to move in signs and wonders. This coming Thursday, I mean Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., right here in this church, we will have healing service. Every alternate Tuesday, the second Tuesday and the fourth Tuesday of the month, we will have healing miracles. We expect people to be healed. And this time, we are expecting not just simple pain or arthritis need to be healed. We are expecting people who have cancer, people who have other diseases that seems impossible to be healed. To be healed. We believe that when we trust God, that miracle must happen. The whole purpose is for us to be able to exercise what Jesus had commanded. Because Jesus made disciples, we make disciples. Jesus healed the sick, we heal the sick. Jesus comforted people, we comfort people. That's what the church is all about. So, but Jesus also said one thing. He said, and remember, I'm with you always to the end of the age. Thanks be to God, we are not doing this alone. But right now, Jesus is here. And Jesus is moving in the midst of us. Uh, okay, I got it. The first thing I'd like you to know is to know your purpose. Very important. Many of us, we find that, uh, you know, life got no meaning. It's because we have not caught on to the eternal purpose of God. If your life has only a temporal purpose, then you find that it doesn't have a meaning. Because the temporal meaning only is such that it will end at finality of death. It means that at the end of your life, then there will be whatever that you have done, it will all fade away. Some of us pursue temporal goals, but God is asking you to pursue eternal goal. Therefore, over here you see it's important to understand you need to seek and you need to disciple, you need to baptize and you need to teach. These will be the instruction and the commandment uh, given to you. That you go into the world and begin to seek for the lost. There are people out there who are heading towards hell like us before, right? We were heading towards hell. At that time when I was seeking and then thank God, God sent uh, a brother into my army camp and began to share Christ with me. He was not ashamed. He was not embarrassed. He was very bold. He knew the Word of God. He was only 18 years old. But yet you find that he knew the Word of God and he shared Christ with me. And then later on, I was disciple in the church 
and got baptized and now I'm teaching. I'm teaching because one person sought to help me. And there are people who are whom you can touch that we cannot. There are people whom you can invite that we cannot. You see, as pastors, we may not have the connection that you have, but then God has sent you into the marketplace for the very purpose of winning soul. Now, what is the message that we preach? This is the gospel that you heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. In Colossians, Paul says that the gospel is what? Jesus. He, <coughs> he is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone fully matured in Christ. You find that in Faith Line, we emphasize on the teaching of Christ. And the great emphasis is that God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to come and die for us. And in dying for us, He's able to rescue us and redeem us so that we have heaven as our home. We have God as our Father. And the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, these are the three persons in one Godhead. So you can say, God the Father is God, God the Son is God, and God the Holy Spirit is God. Once you understand this, then you know that you have come into divine community. You have come into divine purpose. That you are going to grow because of the presence of God Himself. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, this is a test of my patient. Patient. You can see, right? Patient. <laughs> All right. The next point is know your opponents. Let's read the verse here. One, two, three, go. Four, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, against the ruler of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. I want you to understand that we are called winning team because we have an opponent. And this opponent has a whole host of army, the whole host of soldiers, and these soldiers are being set against you. If he had a way, if he has the, the manpower or the demon power, he is going to put one demon on you. But you have no fear because the Bible says that two-thirds of the angels are still obeying God. Only one third of the angels had come down to become demon. Therefore, if he were to put one demon on you, God is going to put two angels on you. Unless you reject the angels. Unless you say, I don't need angels. Then you find that angels cannot operate in your midst. But God is saying that he surrounds you with a hedge of fire so that he can protect you. But many of us, if we live in sin, we are breaking that hedge of fire. If we live in sin, we are breaking the protection of the Holy Spirit, the protection of angels around you. Therefore, the principalities and the powers and these rulers of darkness, they can come against you. So be very careful. So the confrontation has begun. You have to choose which side you want to be. You cannot stay in the middle. Those who stay in the middle die first. Right? So some of you say, oh, you know, one day I want to be with God, you know, on God's side. Then one day I want to be on the devil's side. Then one day I want to be on God's side. And no wonder you have a big struggle in your life. People who tell me that, Pastor, I've been a Christian for many years, but I continue to have struggle with sin. Then let me tell you what is the problem. It's because you are standing in the middle. You feel like you want to enter the zone of darkness, you go in. And then you go into the zone of light. And then you find that one day, Jesus is going to say, I don't know you. You say, but I cast out demons in your name. Jesus said, I don't know you. I heal the sick in your name. Jesus said, I don't know you. You see what happened? Loyalty and obedience. These are the keys to victorious lifestyle. But we play with that. 
because we have this liberty in our soul and spirit. So we decide what we like like to do, and so we stay in the middle. And the Lord also wants you to know your power, because you are not safe to become powerless. He says, but you will receive power <coughs> when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. The power is given, but power cannot work until you appropriate it. If let's say your father has given you a sport car, and that sport car can run uh, really fast, really fast, but if you do not take it to the uh, the arena, uh, sport arena to 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 race, then what happened here is that the sport car is not maximized. Same with your life. Your life is actually very powerful, but if you tell yourself and you believe in the lies of the devil and say that I am weak, I am so weak, but Jesus say yes, you are weak, but I am strong. Appropriate my strength, take my strength and put it on you, and you will be strong. But Lord, but Lord, we have a lot of excuses. That's why we become very weak Christian, living in disobedience, living in disloyalty. You know. We don't like disloyalty. How many of you are bosses here? You like employees who are disloyal to you. You say, "Oh, I only look for disloyal employees." That is not true. You want employees who are loyal to you, loyal to your brand, loyal to your company. But yet, when you come to the Lord, are you loyal, or are you still playing monkey and then go back and forth, go back and forth? Feel like it, you come to church. Don't feel like it, you don't come to church. Feel like it, you serve God. Feel you don't feel like it, you don't serve God. So you know what happened is that your the person on the throne is not Jesus. The person on the throne is you. And when you put you on the throne, you know what is going to be on the throne will be fear, will be all the trepidation, will be all the problems or the situation that you have no control because you yourself make a very lousy God. You have no power, no. But then you continue to want to sit on the throne. Look at your life; you got it all messed up. But God is saying, "Let me be in control. Let me be the king of your life, and then I will manage your life for you." That when you need a direction, I am the director who is able to guide you and lead you. I send you the Holy Spirit to comfort you when you struggle. I have read on Facebook Christians. Who want to commit suicide? I say, what happened? He say, oh, I have no meaning in life. Of course, you have no meaning because you are still on the throne. Every time when you are on the throne, something wrong will happen. But something right will happen when you get out of that throne and let Jesus be the King of your life. So, the power. What can the power do? The power will come to you. It says that after they pray. The power will come to you when you claim it. Praying means receiving it. Praying means going into the holy of holies and say, "Father, I need that power," because they prayed. You see, during the early days, it's not like here. If during the early days they were to meet like this, the soldiers would come. Then you know that they were threatened and not to meet like this. But yet you see, they needed. That encouragement. So they prayed, and the Bible says the place where they were meeting was shaken. How do you like Faith Line Center to be shaken now? Like, I tell you a story of my good friend, Evangelist Koo. Evangelist Koo was in South America, one of those、uh, South American country. I don't exactly remember which one, and he was preaching. In English, and they were translating into that particular language. I think it must be in Brazil because it was in Portuguese. They were translating, translating, and then he said, he found that the people were not interested. They were like, "Who is this Chinese Singaporean? You know, don't know what he's talking about." Then he began to talk about God shaking the earth. This is the end time, and God is shaking. And suddenly there was an earthquake. There was an earthquake, so the whole place shook, the whole church shook. 
I tell you, he said, Pastor, you will never believe it. The altar was packed. Everybody was weeping before God. And sometimes I say, let's shake this place up a little bit. You know, get this place shaken up. So that you will respond. Because you see, the meeting place was shaken. Why? Because they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Something happened after you get filled with the Holy Spirit. Boldness come in. What is boldness? Boldness means getting rid of the timidity that is in your heart. Or the timid, a uh, very timid kind of a, a feeling in your heart. All those gone. Courage take over that cowardice that is in your heart. The fear, the faith comes in. Holy Spirit only bring that. Holy Spirit will add value to your life, will add faith to your life. You are going to be so different if you dare to trust Him. So many of us, I can tell you, your problem right now is because you don't trust the Holy Spirit. You say, but pastor, I trust. I read the Bible every day. I pray every day. But you see, there's a key word that's missing. The word is by faith. Do you pray by faith? Do you believe what God say is true? Yes, you are in a situation. You are in a situation that seems bad. But you are in a winning team. Are you behaving like a winner? You are in a situation where somebody say bad things about you and you want to fight back. But you are in a winning team. What must a winning team do? The winning team is far bigger than the gossip. The winning team is far bigger than the business failure. The winning team is far bigger than any discrepancies in your life. The winning team has the Holy Spirit. Know your power. Know your power. And then there will be bonus in your life. The next thing is I want you to know your team. None of us is as smart as all of us. Ken Blanchard was a management kind of a guru, you know. And when I was young, I used to uh, listen to him. And I believe that he was also influenced by the Christian faith. And so he said, none of us is as smart as all of us. Meaning that the commission of Jesus cannot be fulfilled by one man alone or by one woman alone. You need all of us to be involved. So, join your winning team. You see, first, you acknowledge you are a part of the universal church of Christ. Means that you are part of all of the born-again people upon this earth. When, I, when we went to China, we met the born-again believers. And then they were moving in power and authority. And then they took China for Christ. About 30 years ago, when Singapore was not yet Christian, you find that we had to struggle to take Singapore for Christ. Today, we can safely say we have some 30% of the population, they are Christian. But at the same time, the enemy also starts to sow seed. And so you have all the sinful things coming into Singapore. And I believe this is happening also in Malaysia. That's why all of us have to be alert. And then what, what is your winning team? So where can you find your winning team? Your winning team is the local church of Christ. If God has called you to be, faith, to be in faith line, then stay faithful and come to this church and serve. Come to this church and be trained. Come to this church and let the platform created by this church so that you can launch yourself into the ministry that God has asked you to. But if God has called you to go to another church, then go to another church and be faithful. But you cannot be grasshoppers. Grasshoppers means this week they are in the other church, next week in next church, and third week in another church. So one month, four different churches. One year is like 52 different churches. Because why? Because they are called by God to be inspectors of churches. So they move around to inspect churches. No, a rolling stone gather no moss And people who jump from church to church You will be a very weak Christian Because I can assure you When the devil attack you, you collapse When the devil come for you, you are finished So you have to find your winning team And Okay 
Now, the acronym of team is very interesting, isn't it? Uh, many of you in the corporate world, you know this. It says, together, everyone achieve more. And that's true. In faith line here, you find there are many believers, but there's only one body of Christ. And therefore, we should have one purpose, one goal. What is God asking us to do? And so this morning, we will try to, uh, to find out, okay? Uh, yeah, okay, let's all read this verse. For as, one, two, three, go. For as in one body, we have many members. Shall we all read? <laughs> and the members do not all have the same function. So the Bible is very clear. We are one body, we have many members, but we have different what? Function. So this means what? If you are not functioning in the church, you are not functioning in your team, then something is wrong somewhere because every member of the body of Christ must function. Okay? Now, if you have a part of your, your body, um, some members of your body, let's say this little finger is already dead. This little finger has been crushed and is dead and is rotting. So this finger is not functioning. What must I do? I must go to the hospital and see a surgeon to get it cut off right because if i leave it on to the body it can cause me the whole body to be poisoned you see the point here that the septic simia will come in and destroy the whole body so what i have to do is have to cut it off and so some of us here you find that we think that we can just you know be a christian by the sideline it's not going to happen there's no christianity by the sideline anything by the sideline will not become will not come under the covering of god i assure you disciples are people who are disciplined to do the work of god that's why he said not all have the same function but they must function okay okay so though many are one body in christ and individually members one of another so here, you might be thinking, so now I'm in the body of Christ, I am in the winning team, so I lose my identity. No, the Bible is very clear. Your, indiv your individual character and personality continue to be preserved. Continue, so that you do not become like zombie. All right, let me go very quickly. Uh, Pastor Carlson, can I? Ah, okay. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us let us use them what happened here is that to every member god is giving gifts our job as pastors is to help you to identify your gifts you know like for example if let's say you cannot sing but you love to sing you sing very well in your bathroom all right and you kill the neighbor cats by your singing so you thought that maybe you should come here to sing and you let Pastor Carlson and Pastor Gilbert audition you and both of them fainted. Then later on, you revive them, right? And then you say, I have the gift of singing. And then they say, no, I don't think you have the gift of singing. Then you say, what gift do I have? You have the gift of imagination. You imagine that you can sing, right? So sometimes it's like that you have to find out whether you are really called by god to do that task how the body of christ will tell you the body of christ will tell you exactly you know because they are objectively able to evaluate let's say for example you say that you have a gift of teaching but then you have you do not have the desire to read the Bible. You do not have desire to study. You do not have desire to do any of those hard work that we are doing. Then I can assure you, you don't have the gift of teaching. You most probably have the gift of the gap, but not teaching. You see, because a teacher is a reader. A teacher is a learner. So if I see that you are learning and then you can impart, then I know you have the gift of teaching. So, same with people who say, I'm a preacher. Then I must see whether you can preach and what do you preach. All right, let's go to the next slide. Uh, 
Someone got to help me here. Uh, Pastor Carlson, you see, I always call Pastor Carlson. Without Pastor Carlson, thing can't survive. Yeah. Uh, can you take this and then adjust this because? Okay, thank you. Maybe put some juice inside or something. Yeah. All right. Okay, the back there, I point and you change slide. Okay. All right. All right. Every team consists of other team members, other team players. Understand, you are not alone. No team can win with just one person. People say, but what about Tiger Wood? He could win. You know, he played golf. Of course, but behind him, you find there's a whole team backing him up. All right? So it's not that easy. Even for people who are racing, all right? they, are, they are using the uh, done, thank you. Uh, racing car. Am I pointing right? Huh? This way, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they have a whole team, right? They have people to change their tire. They have people to uh, put in the petrol and so on. Even they race alone. So the team is very important. Make yourself a member of a team. If you come here alone by yourself and then you sit at the back, then before the service is over, you alone, you disappear. You know, you are the lone ranger. Da, 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 da. And then you find that after some time, you come to us pastors and say, Pastor, I don't know why I'm not growing spiritually. Because you are not part of a team. Even a coal, you know, uh, when I was in America, I had this, I, I live in, uh, in, 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 in Pennsylvania, in Pittsburgh. It's winter, winter time, very cold. And so we have this stove and we put this, this charcoal inside there to burn. But if you take one piece of coal out of that stove, you know what's going to happen? Soon that piece will become coal. That piece will have no more fire. But the rest will still be burning hot, but that piece will be no more. So you see, this is what happened here. You don't understand. The devil love it. When you are not in a team The devil love it You know why? Because you are in a winning team The winners are people Who have Jesus Christ As the victorious one Jesus has died on the cross for you He has imparted power to you That's why you now have dominion You now have power And authority over the devil Every single one of you Can cast out demon But some of us here We don't cast out demon we have demon inside us. Why? It's because you have always been on your own. You need a team to work together. So no team can win, but just alone. Now let's look at that. Re recently, how many of you watched the World Cup? Confess. Oh, only one person confess. The rest are all liars. Mm. I confess, I only watched one match. And not even one match. I only watch the the you know the highlights. All right. But for for the purpose of this sermon, I went to watch. <laughs> All right. So then I found out that wow, this France uh, World Cup team, they got what? They got a very good team. They got veteran coach, they got this expert goalkeeper, this vigorous defense, you know. They were able to defend uh, when the ball come to the other to their side they have very clever midfielder they have fast wingers they have superior strikers and then they have great teamwork I look at this and say wow this must be a winning team but every team is like that it's the little bit of difference that makes you an expert that makes you a champion alright you know some of you are in sales I know uh, brother Joseph Brother Joseph Lau there, you know, I'm very proud of him. He, he left his accountancy job and went to become an insurance salesman. They use nice term like, called insurance executive, but still salesman, like, you know, all right? But what happened was that he believed that his purpose is to help people, okay? And then because he is willing to learn And because he is willing to train himself Because he is willing to go out there and meet uh, the prospects Now understand that prospects are not yet clients 
Customers and clients are people who buy from you. But prospects are people about to buy from you. So he went out to, to see them. Why? Because you see, he believed in the purpose and the dream of his life. Okay? So he, he works very hard. But behind him is a whole team. He got his coaches. He got people in the church praying for him. He got his team of people whom he worked with. He got other veteran salesmen he learned from. All these are very important so that you can become a champion yourself. Unless you learn that you have to learn from somebody. I discovered when I was in life insurance, I discovered that there were people who would never make it. I met this man and I told this, this sales uh, executive, I said that I am going to be the million dollar round table within the first year. Now to be a million dollar round table means that you are uh, the member of a top 15% of sales executive in the world. Top 15%. So he laughed at me. He said that, look, I've been in this business for 15 years and I have never achieved MDRT, which means a million dollar round table. When I heard that, you know, my heart sank. Why he sank? Because I said, this guy has been in the business 15 years. He couldn't make it. I have been in the business only three months. And I'm like waxing eloquence and say, I'm going to be the top 15% of the world. But you see, I forgot. It was God who dropped that in my heart. You see, usually I would be very timid. I would say, maybe I can't do it. But somehow, when I prayed, the Lord said, I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to put you in this business so that you can discover yourself. I grew up as a timid boy. I used to stammer even when I talked to my father. Every time my father would say, slow down, breathe hard, and I, 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 Slow down, breathe hard. And you do not know when people who stutters. It's so difficult. You want to say so much, but you couldn't. All the equipment and mechanism not cooperating. All right? And so I would be so frustrated and sometimes I'll be in tears. And my father, though he wasn't a Christian at that time, he would comfort me. He said, just calm down. Just calm down. Talk to me and calm down. The day I became a Christian, the Lord showed me that I would one day become a pastor. When there was a pastor who came to preach and say, who, who, which one of you, you got the call of God? I was the first one to put up my hand because I felt the intensity of the Holy Spirit in my heart. But God got to send me for training. And there wasn't like, you know, uh, in those days, you know, there's a school of uh, learning how to make speeches. So the only way he could send me for training was to send me to this sales job. I was forced to learn how to speak. And by the grace of God, by the grace of God, I was able to achieve what I achieved. And God put that in my heart and said, you will be even more than what the people say. You know, so this man laughed at me and he said that not possible. In, in the whole company, nobody did it in the first year. I was so discouraged. But you see, I have an encourager and He's the Holy Spirit. You see what the Lord is going to do to you? The Lord is going to prepare a table before you in front of your enemies. People who are your opponents, people who say you cannot do it, you are going to do it. Some of you, you have a business going on and people are laughing at you and you can do it. Some of you, God has called you to a greater purpose and then but you are afraid to step into it because so many people discourage you, but you can do it. So you see, what happened here is that God is going to lay that table in front of you and your opponents shall be bound up and they shall see your success. Some of you are already receiving that because you are willing to say, I will not take revenge. People who come and attack me, who discourage me, who cause me to fall, I will not take revenge because the Lord says, vengeance is mine. And because I want the vengeance to be of the Lord, I back off. And then the Lord will get the enemy, will get the opponent who mock at you, and then they will have to, have to see that you are being blessed. 
How many of you can give the Lord a clap offering because of that? All right, praise God. Isn't that true? Isn't that true? Right? When people say you can't do it, when people say no, it's not possible for you. So, understand that God has put you into faith line for a reason that you will be part of the winning team. All right? When God gave us this place, I was a little bit nervous because we did not have enough people. Look at us now. We don't have enough still. But yet, you see, all the people are already inside my stomach. I am already pregnant with all of you, with all the people coming. I remember the first time when God said, give me 23 people, and God said, this group shall grow. This church shall grow to thousands. And I couldn't believe it. Because who am I, Lord? But yet God said, I will send you the winning team. And when the people came, they came as more than conquerors. They came and they took Singapore for Christ. Today, 30% of the people in Singapore are Christian because it began in those days, in the 70s, in the 80s, when we struggled with small groups, churches, home cell. And today, you find the mega churches are found in Singapore. Now we want to pray for Singapore is that we have true disciples in the mega uh, church groups here. All right, let me go very quickly. Know your coaches. The next one is know your coaches. So for our church, we have the pastors and these pastors are your coaches. We also have church leaders who are your coaches. All right, so coaches, the senior coach, the head coach, they also have assistant coaches. All these are helping so that the team can score a goal. And so you know that these are the recent World Cup uh, coaches here. And this Didier Desham, he was the third man. He was obviously the coach of the French team, right? All right, the French national team. And so he was the third man in history to win three World Cups, once as a captain of the team and then twice as a coach. So let me ask you, if you want to learn football, if you want someone to guide you on scoring goals and become world champion, do you think you will call him? Or you will call me? Right? You will call him, isn't it? You won't call me. But you want to learn how to preach, you think you call him? Most probably he speaks in French. Maybe he can preach in, 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 in French. But you will most probably call me. But of course, you see, coaches are people who have already been there. You see, I have people coming to give me advice. Yes, I am open to advice. I, 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 I listen because I listen to advice from many people. But some people, they come and give me full advice. Full advice. I want to advise you how to establish a church. So I ask them a question. How many churches have you established? None. None. I established 20 churches and they're all growing. Some of them, a couple of thousand now. And you got none. And you want to come and teach me? Not because I'm not humble to learn, but at least I must be wise enough to make sure that I'm not learning from ignorance. So can I give you advice on playing football? Of course I can. I watched a lot of World Cup last time. Right? Yeah, last time before I was, I was fully safe. I will wake up early in the morning, you know, early in the morning, 2, 3 a.m. to watch World Cup. But recently, you see, all this no more. But you see, I can give some advice on how to play soccer. But yet, you see, I cannot match the veteran coach. So understand that if you want to come to a place, look for people who can impart to you. Look for people who can challenge you to go into a higher height. All our pastors here, they are trained. If they are not trained, they are under training. All right? Pastor Charlie is taking a master's course. Am I right? All right? Uh, Pastor Grace is also taking a master's course. And then uh, Sister Cindy finished Tungling already. And still uh, taking another course in Tungling. And all, you know, Pastor Ashok is natural. Yes. He is our... Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a big clap. Hobby. I can tell you, this is the gifted teacher. And he learned... From the pastor, his pastor, he learned from many places.
But most importantly, you listen to him. He learned from the Holy Spirit. He studied the Bible and he led the Holy Spirit. That's why we create huddles. Next week, we are going to talk about huddles. We create huddles means that a small group of people, four or five people, you commit to each other to read the Bible and to discuss about the Bible and to pray for each other. You see, this huddle thing is very important. All right, next week, we shall talk more about this. So, this guy was a great coach. And so, what did God do? He gave coaches. He gives, let's all read, He gives some to be what? Apostles, some prophets, hey, read lah, hello. some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. All right? For what purpose? For the equipping of the saints and for the work of, the, of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now, I want you to take note. Some of you here, you say, Pastor, uh, God give evangelists, therefore I don't have to evangelize. I'm not an evangelist. But read very carefully. He says, Son, Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers are what? Are to equip. Even the evangelist is to equip you. Not just to evangelize. It's to equip you to do evangelism. To equip you to be a witness. Alright? And then you find the pastors, teachers, they are to equip you so that your life will be a witness. Your life, all right? You can't, be, you can't wake up in the morning, right? And say, I'm a child of God. And the next thing is that you use vulgar language on your family. You can't, can you? Pastor Ashok, do you do that? No, absolutely not. He can't even spell the word vulgar. Yeah, am I right? Because this is an impossibility. But yet, there are some of you here, you call yourself believers, you go out and you talk to your friend, and all the, all the dirty words come in and out, and then later on, you come into church on Sunday and praise God. From the same mouth, dirty water come out, and the same mouth, clean water come out. You see, this is not possible. Change. Let there be a transformation. If you are so used to use vulgar language, stop. The mouth belongs to the Lord. So here, you see, by way of teaching, I'm now teaching you to how to apply the power of your words, the power of communication in your life. Okay, very quickly. And then, let's all read. Till we all come to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. What is the, What was... Paul talking about that we be united in faith that we have the same knowledge of the Son of God all right that a perfect man uh, to a perfect man means that the perfection at that time you are growing for example you are a little child then you be that perfect child if you are a teenager be that perfect teenager if you are a, an adult be that perfect adult so spiritually you're a child and then you become a spiritual teenager and you can become a spiritual adult you become a son you call it so you be perfect all right to the measure of the stature and the fullness of christ how do you get perfection i tell you is by emptying yourself and then allow the presence of Christ to come in. Many of us have big struggle. Struggle with what? Our will. Remember I told you about the voltage. The voltage and the resistance. When voltage meet resistance, the power come out will be lesser. When resistance is high, the voltage come in, the power that's being released is very little. How come your life has so little power? And how come certain people's life has so much power? It's because of that resistance. But when you meet Jesus Christ, He had no resistance. He said, I obey you fully, Lord. And you know what is happening? That voltage flow through, no resistance, 100% voltage, 100% power comes up. That's what your life can be. Learn to have the fullness of Christ. Then the fullness of power will come forth. Then you find that you can overcome any temptation and anything that is being thrown at you by the devil. So, let's look at the, the world champion. Uh, Didier Deschamps said, no matter what other trophies you, you win in the future, they will never be the same. You are world champions. And I want you to understand 
that no matter no no matter what accolade you receive, you are first a child of God. You are first. Amen. Give a lot of clap, offering, praise God. You are the prince. You are the princess. Tell your friend, I'm a prince. I'm a princess. Talk to each other now. Tell your friend next to you, right? Tell your friend. Tell your friend loud. I'm a prince. I want you to know. Don't behave like a slave anymore. God has released you from slavery that put you into royal household so that you have royalty. Behave like one. Some of you, when I see you at the door, it's as though that you have been enslaved for 400 years. All the slime of slaveries, the wrinkles of slaveries on your face. Oh, master. Why? Because you have not realized who you are. Once you understand who you are, you are going to be greatly transformed. I've got to go very quickly now. Know your uniqueness. Unity does not mean that we are unified in all things and move in uniformity. Because you see, a striker in the football team or in the soccer team, he doesn't behave like a goalkeeper. I have seen one, one match. Was it with uh, Germany? The strike, I mean, the goalkeeper ran out and tried to be the striker. And then, ah, the Korean one, the, the Korean, uh, Germany against Korea, and Germany lost. Remember that one? No, you don't watch football. Okay, it's okay. But I saw that one, and I said, oh, what happened? The goalkeeper ran out to try to score a goal. So he was not performing according to his function. So when the ball came over to this side, the Korean team came, there was no goalkeeper. And the goal post, the, the, the goal mouth was completely open. And so they could score that goal. But understand this way, you do not move in uniformity. You are not the same. You have your own gift. And so the winning team consists of what? Skillful people who independently work towards one interdependent goal in unison. This is the church. Many of you are gifted. Let's work together. Let's, those of you who need to win souls, go out there and win souls. There are family members who are not safe and they stay with you. It's time to invite. I talked to one young man and he said that, Pastor, you don't know my father. If I were to invite him to church, he would scold me. So I asked him, will he slap you? He said, no, lie, he wouldn't slap you, me. But he would scold me. I said, why are your skin so thin? Because when I talked to my father, he slapped me. But you see, my skin very thick. The more you slap me, the more I talk to you. Until my father became a Christian. So you see, it's very important for you that you have a function. What is your function? Your whole family need to be saved. Now we talk about our church. The third generation need to be saved. Today, I want all of you who are fathers, who are mothers, right? Take care of your children so that they be spiritually empowered, that your grandchildren might have hope. Don't do, you know, you go to heaven, your children go to heaven, but grandchildren, great-grandchildren all end up in hell. Next time you look for your family, you're going to look down. They're not with you in heaven. So, be very careful, okay? The strength of the team is each individual member. The strength of each member is the team. This is by Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson is this guy over here. Uh, this is the Phil Jackson here when he was very young. Of course, now he is a very old man. But he said this, the strength of the team is each individual member. Very important. The strength of the church is you, okay? Empowered by the Holy Spirit. And then the strength of each member is the team. And then this uh, Coach K, very well-known coach, basketball coach, he said, to me, teamwork is the beauty of our sport where you have five acting as one, you become what? Selfless. So even in the secular world, they understood the meaning of being selfless. Uh, selfless. So to be the winning team year after year, our team, means Faith Line team, needs to have the winning strategy of the kingdom. And so the strategy is what? These are the five things that we need. Empowerment, discernment, unity, position, authority. Let me tell you about empowerment. 
Strategy number one Without God, you cannot Without you, God will not God will not God always use people When God wanted to uh, The children of Israel To cross the Red Sea He didn't open the Red Sea He said, Moses Raise up your staff The Red Sea shall open he did not open the Jordan. He said that let the priest put the foot, put the first feet down, all right, and then that Jordan shall open. So you see, prayer, the Bible says, or Jesus said, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. The Lord wants you to touch the nation, but first He got to teach you how to have power. And power comes from prayer, all right. We are going to have this monthly prayer meeting. Uh, it's called Faith Power Night And we are going to have this We are sorting things out And we are having this healing And we are having Bible study here All these things are happening in this place But on your own You have to learn how to pray In your huddle group You learn how to pray In your cell group You learn how to pray Strategy number two Discern the strategy of your opponents Anticipate the areas of attack Develop a strategy to attack Defend and counter-attack Some of you already under attack your family got under attack. Your children are like not keen about God. All right? That you find this unity in your family. There are already this disagreement, right? And then small things you find that it stirs up. That happened with Pastor Grace and me too. Little small things. And then I would like suddenly be so angry for nothing. Okay? And then the Holy Spirit would slap me left and right, you know? Say, wake up! This is not important, you know. And then when you listen to the Holy Spirit, He will bring you back to your senses. So develop a strategy, right, to attack the enemy. How do I attack the enemy? Means that I continue to witness, I continue to evangelize, I continue to speak peace. Every time when the devil speaks war into my family, I speak peace. I declare peace. I want the shalom of Jesus Christ to come into my house. You, the first line of defense will be your own home. Don't quarrel with your brothers or sisters. Don't quarrel with your mother and father. Don't quarrel with your spouse especially. Don't quarrel with your children. Alright? Speak peace and then you find that peace, the prince of peace would be there. Very quickly, unity. Five times in John 17, Jesus prayed that they may be one. Why did He pray that? Because teamwork is the only way to fulfill the great commission I found in China when I was there I visited the underground churches and you know how many millions of home cells they had at that point when the communists took over the country and all the missionaries were chased out the missionaries said oh now China got no hope China got a lot of hope because salvation did not depend upon the missionaries Salvation depends upon Christ and Christ alone. And then all the pastors, you know, pastors like us, many of them were captured, put into prison, put into hard labor camp, and then some of the greater pastors, more well-known pastors, so they will end up in Inner Mongolia, crucified on the cross. There was at one time they crucified 200 over pastors at one go. You want to talk about ISIS? The communists are like ISIS. They crucified the pastors. They closed down the churches. They killed the elders. How many elders were stormed to death with boots? All right? And some of them were dragged behind horses until their whole body, because over rocks and all whole body torn to pieces. They watched them die. How many of our fellow ministers died like that? But yet there is still the Holy Spirit. Amen. Give a lot of clap offering. I want you to just remember that. If anything happened to Malaysia, there's still the Holy Spirit. That's why when in the 1980s, when I first entered China, I was not sure what I would find. At that time, there was a group that asked me and one of my pastors, Pastor Amos, I think some of you met Pastor Amos. We were the two who, who, <laughs> who took Bible into China. We become God smuggler. We smuggle. Bible into China at that time our harvest sack was full of Bibles and I was praying you know that I tell you I was never as nervous as that time when the plane landed I was so nervous 
I was like having cold sweat. Because once you get arrested, you will go into the lockup straight away. They will keep you for three days and then they will kick you back. And then you can ne never enter uh, that place again, China again. Pastor Amos and I, and we got a team of people, a team of lay people. So we said, we are the pastors. So Pastor Charlie, you and I, huh? right? We die, never mind. Huh? Okay, so all the pastors, right? So we die, okay. So what we did was that we took the Bible. We went in. When the plane landed, we were the two who rushed in and said, if we want to be arrested, let us be arrested early. We went in and then we walk in. You know, when they stamped the passport, we walk in for the custom to check by the grace of God. The custom officers were wearing their shirt. They were not ready. Their counter wasn't ready. Something had gone wrong. And they were like rushing to set up the station. And the two of us walked past them. And we went to the crowd and waited for all our people to come. And we saw they checked every bag except the two harvest sacks of Bible. Want to give a lot of clap <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But I tell you, for the people in China, they suffered more. They suffered more. But yet you see the Holy Spirit continue to work. Today, if you want to compare China with America, China with, with no missionaries, and then America with so many preachers, today I can tell you, the strength of Christianity is found in China because that is where the Holy Spirit works. Give a lot another clap offering. Praise God. Let the Holy Spirit work among you. Let the Holy Spirit work. Very quickly. Teamwork most important. So how many of you read about this Adrian Rabiot, right? He refused to be the reserve player in the French team. Therefore, he was out. Why? Because he was too good. He said, I cannot be in the reserve. I should be in the main team. But the coach said no. And sometimes this is what happened here. Sometimes in the church, when you have been asked by uh, the, the, the leadership here to start to be an usher, you say, oh, I am bigger than an usher. So then we say, okay, then you be greeter. Oh, I'm bigger than greeter. Then, you know, then maybe you be uh, interpreter. Oh, I'm greater than interpreter. Then maybe you be a leader. Oh, I'm bigger than the lay leader. Then you be the pastor. No, I'm bigger than a pastor. Then you be the senior pastor. Why? Because you see pride. And this man, he couldn't work with the team because the coach saw beyond talent. You can be very gifted, but if you are, do not know how to be submissive, this man, I believe, <coughs> France, the fans in France will not forgive him easily. All right? Because teamwork is more important than your, all your talent. So the Bible says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. And so, strategy number four is position. Maximize God-given talent in the appropriate position, the function during the challenge. If you are a striker, be the best striker. If you are a defender, be the best defender. And then number five, authority. Confront the opponent with maximum authority and power and command the demons to go and infirmity to cease in the mighty name of Jesus. On Tuesday, we are going to do that. And then later on, we are going to do that. But you have to confront the opponent. How many of you have actually cast out demons in your life? Okay, one, two. Okay, a few of you, huh? Okay, the pastors have done it. How many of you like to cast out demons? Okay, okay, some of you. How many of you are demons? Okay, no. <laughs> it's either you cast out demons or you become a demon. Huh? Why are you afraid? It's because, you see, you do not realize how much authority you have. The very moment you exercise your authority, you know that you are powerful. So, know your purpose. That is what the, uh, our first point. Know your opponents. Know your power. Know your team, know your coaches, know your uniqueness, and know your strategy. This is how we can take the kingdom of darkness 
and make it into the kingdom of light. This is how you can conquer the darkness in your family. And you, when you use all this, the seven approaches, you will find you can break the bondage of Satan in your family. Today you say, no more. No more you will touch my family. No more you will touch my loved ones. Today, I shall have witnesses in my home. I shall have peace in my home. I shall have victory in my home. We are more than conquerors. We are winners. That my, the winning team starts with my family. And then it can spread out. Would you just bow your heads and close your eyes in prayer? I'd like to pray with you. How many of you will say, Yes, Pastor, I claim that for my family. That we shall have the winning team in my family. Just raise your hand to God. Just raise your hand to God. Yes, 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 yes. Praise God. Praise God. That's what we claim. This God's family. You see, when you claim it, God hears it. And then you find Holy Spirit comes to empower you.